Hi, good afternoon. My name is Ilma and this is from the Ilma Art Studio channel. And today, my art talk would be on how to take your own photograph professionally. In other words, how to make it look like a real good photographer has taken your picture. Well, um, I'd like to show you uh, if you check my website at www.ilmaarts.com, this is the actual cover page on the website. So that's a picture of me, and I took that myself. And would you like to know how to do that? Because uh, I'm sure you'll be, with the technology right now, you can always fix something that you took but it's always good to know how to take a good photograph of your own self. Um, I am fortunate that I have a background in theater um, as a stage manager and an, and an actress as well so more or less I could model for my own self like at first it was really hard to run around and be your own model and be your own and be the photographer yourself but uh, with practice, I have um, learned how to do that on my own because I was always frustrated that I always take nice pictures of everybody, of everybody else, but I don't have a picture of my own. So I promised myself when I came to Orangeville and, um, and with digital photography, you can do anything right now. Um, you, what, what would you need to be able to um, take your own pictures nicely? Or professionally well you don't need to have expensive cameras any camera will do a point-and-shoot camera will do and um, I'd like you to invest on if you have a point-and-shoot camera which is small you can get a tripod to a small tripod for it and and actually I have a tripod that I got from the dollar store myself so it's a dollar fifty tri tripod which works for my small point-and-shoot cameras and it's very handy so you don't have to really bring a big tripod and move it around now you will see in this picture um, at the beginning you'll probably be uh, having a hard time to compose because you you have to develop a certain memory remembering um, when you look at the lens of the camera, you remember how you're composing it. So you're, in other words, you're composing the background of what you're going to take off. Like, like, uh, and, and since I have uh, since I have a landscape photography experience, it's easy for me to apply the rule of thirds and putting the elements on it. And I've been talking to you about that earlier on how to put elements in your photograph. Um, you will notice that in this, I also apply the rule of thirds, which I've been talking to you about. I didn't sit right in the middle. I sat right on one side. Um, actually, like you can always move your camera around. If it's on a tripod, you can always move it around in such a way that you can compose a picture with, a, with applying the rule of the third. Um, it will take a lot of experiments to do what you really want to do but uh, once you have a picture in your mind of what parts of your um, features you would like to uh, uh, you know you'd like to to emphasize you wouldn't want to uh, wouldn't want to take a picture of yourself and take the bad side of you so you you have to know what is your good side um, actually in my case I think it's my left profile you know and so it's flattering. It was flattering when I tilted my head and took a profile. And usually, don't look straight in a picture because that's like that's that's like a photo ID. Like you know, when you take pictures for for a government ID or anything, they want you to look straight. They don't want you to smile. But if you're taking your own picture, you can experiment and find out what features are bad, and then try to avoid putting emphasis on that feature and also lighting is important you know the best way you take a good portrait is by the window or you know or, or by the door where there's light natural light coming in in fact right now 
this video is taken just by the window. I don't have any other extra light, but because it's uh, noontime, then I have all the light coming in the window, so that works for me. So those are the things that you consider when you take your own um, self-portraits. And also, uh, and another tip, what I did was to buy a small doll, you know, I think I bought two or three different kinds of doll. I had a baby doll, and I had, there's there's not much that you can buy today that is really life-size, because it would be nice if they're life-size, because sometimes I'm constrained with the, with studying photography on my own, I don't have a model and I don't want to pay somebody else to do that. So what I do is to try and experiment with dolls. And I got a doll with the black hair, with the dark hair, with the red hair, with the, with blonde and something that doesn't have hair, like a baby doesn't have hair. So and I experimented on that and see what the effect of my camera would be on my shoot or my composition would be on these dolls. And through that, I learned how to play with lights and I learned how to accentuate backgrounds based on what I see. Then when I do that, then I can actually apply that on myself. Like, um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of experimentation and a lot of practice for you to be able to take good photographs of yourself. So thanks for watching and I'd like you to check my website again at ilmaarts.com and, um, my book is almost done, uh, my first book of Orangeville, which is entitled My Love Affair with Orangeville, will soon be out, hopefully uh, by the middle of February, and um, I'm excited because it, it is a photo poetic journal, it's a photo poetic journal and a story of my love affair with this town in Canada where I went straight from the Philippines. Thanks for watching and have a great day.